Many of you have seen the video where I calculated the probability of a collision between a unmanned aircraft and a full-scale aircraft within the flight path of an airport to be approximately 1 in 31.7 million, assuming no other collision avoidance techniques were used. I'm Alex Greve, the president of the FPVTA, and I want to address the risk associated with a collision. Now, though the, co the probability of collision is low, the number of these in the U.S. airspace is increasing, and that means the number of uh, possibilities is also increasing. Eventually, there will be another collision between a full-scale aircraft and a model, simply because the probability does actually exist. But as much as we would like to believe that crashes with aircraft are rare, they're not. A simple test is type in airplane crash into Google and check the images. You'll find thousands of airplane crashes that have happened. But I want to address a question uh, proposed to me by user Backhost. And is it, he posed the question, is it right for us to impose a risk of us flying our models on full-scale aircraft? And on the surface, it would seem no. It is not right to impose a risk on another party. However, a little bit of analysis would suggest that maybe we do this a lot more than we think. In the past four months, there have been five deaths resulting from two airplane crashes in a crowded area. One was into a hangar, killing three, and another one was an airplane crashing into a house, killing two people inside and bursting the house into flames. So when an aircraft, full-scale aircraft takes off, there is indeed a risk to people on the ground that they could be killed despite being innocent. In fact, the probability of that happening is approximately 1 in 10 million. So it's almost impossible to not in induce some sort of risk on an uninvolved party. It's simply the nature of life. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't analyze the risk of a mid-air collision. Well, when it comes to a mid-air collision, we really need to break up aircraft in two categories, and the first being airliners and the second being private aircraft. Airliners or passenger jets, when they take off, they often climb at a very, very steep angle between 20 and 30 degrees and operate in airspace that this simply cannot reach. So on takeoff and cruise, there really isn't a chance of collision simply because they're operating in completely different airspace. But private aircraft are a little bit different. They don't take off at steep angles, and they often operate in the same airspace that you will find a model or a UAV. And when it comes to jetliners, they still have to land. And they land very similar to a private aircraft, and they will cross over the airspace used by a UAV. In these situations, the impact speed between an airplane and a model are significantly lower, simply because simply because when landing a jetliner is at the edge of a stall and while that jetliner is designed to take 500 plus miles an hour when it's landing it seldom exceeds 120 so the impact speed is significantly lower and we do have one data point on this where a biplane did actually collide with a giant scale aircraft 20 feet off the deck and despite this collision being one of the worst possible scenarios, the biplane at high speed and low altitude connecting with a giant scale aircraft significantly bigger than most UAVs, there was only damage to the model, which was destroyed, and the biplane, which was able to land safely. So the collision energy might not be great enough to do significant damage to an aircraft. So now we need to talk about risk analysis. How do we do this? We know that the impact speed is going to be fairly low, but what about the unmanned aircraft? Well, there are two ways to category, uh, categorize unmanned aircraft. And one is ones made of a compressible solid, such as foam, like this aircraft, which in the event of an impact will act as a cushion between any parts on board the aircraft and the actual full scale, making the impact energy significantly lower. However, the other types, such as a helicopter, a multi-copter, this isn't a compressible solid, and it's therefore the impact energy is a little bit higher. However, we really don't have any data knowing what a collision with this would be. So, any, so anything is just speculation at this point. 
However, simply because the probability is low and the risks are questionable at best, doesn't mean we modelers and enthusiasts should not behave responsibly. And the responsibility starts with the pilot and making their aircraft more visible. And one way is by reflective tape, such as I have put on this model. What this does is increases visibility by making the sun reflect off of the surface and reflect back, making it much more visible to other aircraft. This tape can be found at most most auto parts stores and most truck shops and its cost is somewhere between 75 cents to a dollar a foot. Granted, it's expensive, but when you consider the cost of your model, maybe you ought to invest in some of this stuff. There are different tapes. This just happens to be DOT tape, but any reflective tape will do. Another technology we can employ is lighting. These light strips are fairly inexpensive and if you're going to make a night flight, they are an absolute must. You must identify that you have an aircraft in the sky so you can employ see and avoid. And these lights can be seen for miles. So it's very easy for an aircraft to avoid a collision. There are other technologies we can employ, such as transponders and receivers, but not all full-scale aircraft use these. However, we can use a spotter in place of this, simply watching out for our airspace, or simply use our ears. Listen. Listen for aircraft. If you hear one, drop altitude. Get, be sure you are out of the way. There are many rules that most hobbyists agree to that significantly reduce the risk of a collision. And that's what the FAA Reauthorization Act, meaning within a set of safety guidelines of a community-based organization, was addressing. Operating safely is one of the most important things we can do. But we can't police everybody. There are always going to be idiots that fly in areas you simply shouldn't and take higher risk. And it is a responsibility of all of us modelers not to criticize them, but to educate them on the risk they're taking and make them understand that that risk is just not acceptable and to behave more responsibly. So as a fellow modeler and as a representative of the FPVTA, I ask you to please operate your aircraft responsibly. And when you see another operating irresponsibly, please educate them on the dangers of operating in such a manner. I'm Alex Grieve and keep them flying.